Welcome everyone to this evening's webinar with the topic of obtaining checkbook control over your IRA. My name is Natalie with Sense Financial and we are a boutique financial firm specializing in self-directed uh, retirement accounts with checkbook control. Since 2010, we have assisted over 3,000 clients to establish more than 4,000 self-directed retirement plans. I see that many of you are clients um, that are joining us today and it's great to see you. If you are not part of the Sense Financial family yet, we would be happy to arrange a complimentary consultation with one of our retirement account experts to discuss how you can be in control of your retirement savings. So be sure to contact us. Um, but before we get started, I would um, like to introduce our presenter, which is Dimitri from Achenico, and I'm going to give a brief introduction. Uh, Dimitri is the founder and president of Sense Financial LLC and holds a designation of Certified IRA Services Professional by American Bankers Association. He began his career in financial planning and real estate investing back in 2000. He is a licensed real, uh, California real estate broker, a real estate investor, and he's also a private lender. Over the years, he's taught hundreds of investment and financial planning seminars and mentored thousands of investors. So welcome, Dimitri. Glad that you are able to join us, and I will let you take on over from here. Great. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, everything's good. Okay, great. Okay, let me get my slides over, and we'll begin. Welcome again to uh, tonight's uh, presentation. Um, about uh, IRA LLC or a checkbook IRA. And we're gonna teach you how to obtain checkbook control over your retirement account. Before we begin, I wanted to uh, share our mission with you, which is helping our clients obtain control and protect their retirement accounts. Uh, Proverbs 21.5 says that good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. And we do wanna come alongside you and help you on that journey to accomplish this. Uh, before I jump into presentation, I wanted to share with you an example. Uh, I call it an IRA makeover. Uh, this is example uh, what we do for our clients. Jason is one of our earlier clients. Uh, he's been a client for over 10 years now. He is from uh, Tallahassee, Florida. He found us online, reached out and uh, we uh, were able to establish a checkbook IRA plan for him. He actually had a couple different retirement accounts, an IRA and a 401k, uh, combined about $135,000. Uh, he was looking at his statements, uh, similar to the times that we are in now. And uh, he was uh, looking, his balance is going down, actually. He was losing money in the stock market. And uh, um, uh, so he was looking for a solution online. He found Sense Financial, reached out. I remember doing a consultation with him. We established a, a checkbook control plan for uh, Jason. And uh, he was able to make three investments with uh, the capital that he had available. He was able to purchase a rental property, which by now more than doubled in value. Since then, he was able to invest portion of the funds into his brother's manufacturing business. His brother uh, was a serial entrepreneur and uh, uh, he started successfully several businesses. This was uh, his uh, uh, next venture. It was a private, bus uh, private business, not publicly traded. So there was no uh, uh, option to invest with a normal IRA, but because he had a self-directed IRA with checkbook control, he was able to do that. And then uh, finally, he invested portion of the money into real estate notes. So essentially, his uh, IRA became a bank and uh, he lent uh, uh, money to uh, someone uh, who needed those funds. And this note was secured by real estate. Uh, so if you look at before and after, uh, from uh, about $135,000, uh, no income, uh, losing money to uh, acquiring those uh, assets that are uh, started producing stable and consistent income 
uh, going forward and those assets also uh, increased in value over time. So this is an example of what we, what we uh, can do. So let's talk about uh, self-directed IRA. Uh, what it is, essentially it is a tax deferred trust account that is held by the IRS approved custodian. A custodian is required for uh, every IRA. If you have an IRA, you must have a custodian. And uh, uh, the, the challenge with the majority custodian out there, uh, such as Schwab, Fidelity, Merrill Lynch, and, uh, and so on, that uh, they place investment li uh, limitations or limitations on the investments. They only al allow you to invest in the uh, uh, stock market uh, uh, type of investments. But uh, self-directed IRA custodian does not have those uh, uh, restrictions. So uh, it allows you to invest in non-traditional assets. Uh, this IRA has been around since 1974. So quite a bit, almost 50 years. Um, the reason it is very little known is because your, your financial advisor or your stock uh, uh, broker uh, either unaware of uh, its existence or if they do, they'll try to discourage you perhaps from uh, getting involved in something like this because that means you're going to be taking money away from them. And, and when you do, they get paid when you invest through them. When you move your money into alternative assets, they don't get paid. So essentially, they're not uh, uh, acting on, on uh, your best interest. But these uh, types of retirements being set up to benefit people like you and, and I, uh, save for retirement under Internal Revenue Code Section 408. Uh, just a quick comparison. If you have a, a conventional, we'll call it a conventional IRA or a 401k, just a normal uh, retirement account, uh, it is controlled by the custodian and the only investment choices that are available for you are stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. That's it. You, you can't do anything else. Uh, you can buy a piece of investment real estate with your uh, conventional IRA, but the self-directed IRA on the other hand has uh, virtually limitless investment options. What you see here on the right side under self-directed, uh, just some of the most common investments. Uh, obviously, real estate is common, tax liens and tax deeds, uh, mortgage notes, uh, trust deeds, uh, private business, uh, just like Jason did, partnership. Uh, you can invest in real estate internationally. I do have clients who invested in uh, uh, real estate in Canada, in Mexico, in, in South America, in uh, 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 several countries in Europe, in India, in Japan. So you have those options, you have those possibilities. Um, you can uh, uh, invest in a private business uh, with your retirement account, just like Jason did with her, his brother. And uh, I've done that myself. Uh, you can also do private lending. This is my uh, uh, preferred personally. I love doing uh, being a private lender with my retirement funds. So you can use your IRA as a bank. And uh, um, the, the reason I love this because it's completely passive. Uh, you, you don't have to do anything. You just do your due diligence up front and then you uh, are completely passive. You just, uh, uh, some call it the mail box money because every month you get the, uh, the, the, the check mailed to you. Uh, in my my case, or in, in many cases, it's actually electronic deposit to your bank account. Uh, and uh, uh, it's also low risk because your investment is secured by real property, unlike stock market, for example. Uh, you invest in the stock market, there is no uh, collateral there. But uh, uh, being a lender, your your loan is protected, your principal is protected. Uh, and also uh, uh, third reason because it uh, provides very nice returns on your money. Uh, uh, all the loans that I've done, uh, private loans, they're double digit return. Uh, and you can also do stocks and mutual funds. For some reason, people have this misconception that when you have a self-directed IRA, you can only do real estate. 
uh, no, you can uh, invest uh, virtually into anything. Uh, real estate is uh, probably the most common, but you can do all kinds of other things, including stocks and mutual funds. So if you are uh, made an investment in real estate, for example, and then uh, that uh, property produces uh, cash flow and you accumulate a few thousand dollars, you're sitting on that cash, you can buy some stocks or mutual funds with it. All you need to do is just open a brokerage account for your checkbook IRA. Uh, you, and, and you can do that. So uh, let's take a look how it works. I, I'm a visual person and uh, I think uh, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to understand uh, by using a diagram. So number of one or step number one is you need to open a, a new uh, account with the IRS approved custodian that allows alternative investments. Number two, number two you do qualify transfer. You move money from your existing uh, retirement account, uh, uh, whether it's an IRA or a 401k or for a uh, 403b, um, but those employer sponsored plan, they uh, typically must be from the previous employer, because if you have an employer sponsored plan with the current employer, typically you won't be able to move those funds. They're locked up until you either reach a retirement age or no longer employed there. Next, uh, as a, an account uh, owner, you direct the custodian what you want to do. So you, you want to invest in a piece of real estate or uh, uh, or a note and so on. So all the income from those investments must go back to an IRA because IRA owns the investment and all the expenses related to the investment. For example, uh, you uh, on a rental property, you have uh, 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 property taxes, or you may have uh, uh, insurance payment, or or perhaps some repairs. Uh, you must pay all those expenses out, out of an IRA. Uh, but the disadvantage is that uh, each time you do a transaction, each time you buy or sell an asset, uh, you have to go through the custodian. So custodian essentially is a middleman between you and your IRA. They hold the uh, assets, they hold the cash, and you have to go through them for each transaction. Uh, so it uh, th there are fees and there are delays, and uh, uh, that's why there is an alternative that we're gonna talk about, uh, which is a checkbook IRA. But uh, uh, here, uh, again, if you uh, uh, just with a normal retirement account, you may be just as this couple, uh, husband is saying, I finally decided to put something aside for our retirement, which is our plan to retire. Again, if you're invested in stock market only and you're watching your balances going down month after month, you, you may as well uh, arrive to this conclusion. But uh, uh, thankfully, there is uh, alternatives. And uh, I'm glad that you're joining us tonight to learn about this. Uh, the benefits of the self-directed IRA is that it allows you to invest in uh, non-traditional assets. Because uh, again, remember with your uh, Fidelity IRA or your uh, Schwab uh, 401k, the only investment choices are uh, those that are tied to the stock market. Uh, the self-directed IRA allows you to have true diversification. You can invest in virtually anything. Uh, we, we'll talk about some of the limitations, some of the prohibited transactions, but uh, uh, virtually any investment uh, uh, can be possible. Your investment returns are tax deferred. When you make personal investment uh, uh, with your uh, savings, uh, all the gains and all the income will be taxed in the year in which you incur them. But uh, uh, doing that inside of a self-directed IRA your gains are sheltered from taxes. So uh, capital gains taxed on a sale, no capital gain uh, uh, taxes on sale of the real estate. Uh, and you don't need to do a 1031 tax deferred exchange because this uh, transaction takes place inside of a tax deferred vehicle. Uh, you can also use leverage you can't use leverage to buy uh, stocks, but you can use leverage to buy real estate. 
you can actually use leverage uh, in, inside of an IRA and you can acquire investment property using a non-recourse loan. We'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. Uh, by the way, uh, if you do have questions, uh, you can go ahead and type them in the Q&A uh, section. Uh, you should see there is a Q&A uh, box there. So you can go ahead and pu put your questions there. We'll uh, try to address them at the end. Uh, and uh, if not, then we'll, we'll get back to you uh, in the next day or so. But uh, go ahead and type your questions. I, I love uh, uh, one of the things about the question is that it's not only you going to be learning something new, but uh, your, your peers who are joining this webinar will be learning uh, from you asking questions uh, as well. So they may not ask any questions, but they're going to learn something by, by your questions. So I, I certainly encourage questions. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of the custodial self-directed IRA. Uh, there are delays because uh, custodian essentially is a middleman between your uh, IRA and, and yourself. You have to go through the custodian for each transaction and each investment that you're going to be making. Uh, so there are delays because there is a process. You need to complete certain form. You need to submit it to the custodian for approval. And uh, uh, you may very well lose a deal in some cases. That happened a number of times I, uh, by uh, uh, some of the testimonials from, uh, from my clients who switched to checkbook control. Uh, you have a lack of total control because, again, you don't have direct access to your funds and to your investments. You always have to go through the custodian. Uh, also, there's a lot of red tape uh, that uh, you have to go through the custodian. Uh, you have to go through the reps. Uh, oftentimes, uh, the representative that you're talking at the self-directed IRA uh, custodial uh, or a trust company is... Uh, just have maybe nominal knowledge on the topic and uh, may not even provide you with the accurate information. I know a number of examples when uh, the, uh, the representative actually uh, made a recommendation or, or uh, uh, led client belief uh, that certain uh, a transaction was okay when in fact it was a prohibited transaction. And this is uh, also to remind you that whether you have a, a checkbook control, you obviously need to understand the rules. And I always tell my clients, if you're not sure about something, ask and ask me before doing this, not after the fact. But uh, whether you have a checkbook control, you need to understand the rule. If you don't have a checkbook control, a custodian may stop a potential prohibited transaction but they won't necessarily will because if if they don't if it's not obvious and you proceed with that transaction and it happens to be a prohibited transaction by the IRS, then you and only you are responsible. So you have to know assets. Uh, I'm sorry, the the rules, IRS rules, regardless uh, which uh, option you're using. Uh, and uh, um, obviously fees, the disadvantage is the cost because uh, there are fees for everything, for issuing a check, for uh, uh, making an investment, for selling an investment, a transaction fee, and also asset-based fees. So uh, uh, the, the longer you have the, the account, the, the larger it grows, the fees grow as well with it. Some custodians even charge fee based on the on the number. What's the total uh, value of your account? Which is doesn't make any sense to me. They're not your partner uh, to charge to, to get a percentage, but some of them do, and so um, that can be avoided with the checkbook IRA. And checkbook IRA is a solution to all those uh, uh, disadvantages. So let's talk how it works. Uh, essentially, Checkbook IRA, uh, uh, step number one is you also need to have uh, an, I, uh, uh, an IRA account with the IRS approved custodian. 
uh, next you're gonna do a qualified transfer from uh, uh, your existing retirement account into your newly established uh, uh, self-directed IRA custodial account. Uh, next, that's where the difference is. We are going to create a special purpose single member LLC. This LLC is uh, um, designed or, or open specifically to be owned by the IRA. So your IRA is the sole owner of this LLC and uh, you are the manager of the LLC. You're not the member, you don't own the LLC, your IRA does, uh, but uh, you're the manager. Uh, and as a manager, you have full control over the uh, uh, LLC and its assets, and that's how you're able to bypass the custodian, because custodian is still there. And uh, once the LLC is uh, uh, established, we will instruct your uh, IRA custodian to buy LLC units. So that's how LLC is funded. IRA buys 100% units of the LLC. The custodian transfers uh, the uh, entire balance of the IRA into the IRA uh, uh, LLC checking account. And uh, you as the member, I'm sorry, as the manager of the LLC, you're the signer on that account. So from, from there, instead of uh, making transactions in your IRA, you're doing them in the LLC that your IRA owns. So as a manager of the LLC, you decide you wanna buy this investment property or you wish to uh, uh, invest in this uh, uh, tax lien and trust deeds or fund this private mortgage. Uh, all the income from those investments must be flowing back to the LLC checking account because LLC owns those investments and all of the expenses that are directly related to those investments must be paid from the LLC checking account. As you can see, custodian is not involved in those uh, transactions. Uh, you do them directly, you're the only one in control of that uh, LLC checking account and the LLC itself. The advantages of using a checkbook IRA structure is that uh, you have a checkbook control, which allows you to bypass the custodian. You have direct access to your IRA assets that are now inside of the LLC. All the transactions are speedy. There is no need to go and get the custodian approval or consent on a certain transaction. The transaction can be done as quickly as uh, writing a check. So if you are uh, uh, in, uh, uh, if there is a, a quick transaction that is needed, you can actually execute that on the spot. With the custodial IRA, you'll have to submit a, a form. You have to submit that uh, uh, to the custodian, wait for them to review that, uh, hopefully approve it, and then it's gonna take a, a few more, more days for them to actually advance the funds. And uh, in, um, in some instances, you can lose on that transaction on that deal because you were not able to act quickly. Also, the use of the checkbook IRA uh, because uh, it's uh, uh, utilizing the LLC to provide you with that checkbook control gives you additional protection from litigation because LLC is a limited liability company. It gives you additional protection. Because of the structure, you don't have any custodial uh, transaction, asset-based fees or uh, uh, like a purchase or sell. Uh, investment fees, you pay in a, a, a fixed uh, fee and uh, overall your cost is significantly lower. It costs more to establish a checkbook IRA upfront, but uh, you'll definitely be saving in the long run. And uh, all the assets uh, held in the name of the LLC. So LLC takes title to the investments, whether it's uh, a property, LLC holds the uh, the deed of the property, if you're doing a private loan, then LLC is listed as the lender. 
uh, buying real estate inside of the uh, self-directed uh, IRA LLC is very common. It's probably the most common investments. Uh, the income and gains uh, generated by the investment are tax deferred. And uh, you're going to be paying taxes at the future date rather than in the year when you actually the investment produces return. Uh, income and gains inside of a Roth IRA are tax free because you your Roth IRA can also be set up as a checkbook IRA. So think about uh, this uh, uh, concept of paying taxes on the seed and having the tax free harvest. You're not going to be paying any taxes on the harvest. Just the seed that you plant is going to be uh, is taxed, and the harvest is going to be tax free. If you have ability to invest in some uh, high appreciating assets such as real estate, then uh, Roth IRA makes a lot of sense or some other investment opportunities that uh, uh, offer high yield. Um, also, it's important to remember that uh, income from the investments that uh, your uh, IRA LLC owns, they must go back into the LLC checking account. And all the expenses that are directly related to the investment must be paid from the account. Uh, if you were to use uh, any of the income personally, that will be considered a prohibited uh, transaction. We'll talk about that in a couple of slides. Uh, and uh, um, uh, okay. Uh, now let's talk about financing of the uh, investment uh, real estate inside of your IRA LLC. It's certainly possible, but because uh, the Internal Revenue Code Section 4975 specifies that you, as a disqualified person, are prohibited from providing a personal guarantee, the loan must be non-recourse. And non-recourse means that there is no personal guarantee. So the uh, uh, asset is the only security for the loan. So the property that you're buying will be the only security for this reason. So it is high risk to the lender uh, non-recourse lenders typically will require 30 to 50 percent down. The property must uh, have sufficient cash flow to pay uh, the mortgage and all the expenses. Uh, lender typically will uh, require reserves, about 10 percent of the purchase price. And uh, uh, if you're doing this inside of an IRA, it will trigger uh, UDFI, which is unrelated debt finance income, which is inside of an IRA, is subject to UBIT, which is unrelated business income tax. Now, those of you that are uh, listening to this, and if you are self employed or own a business without full time employees, you can qualify for self directed uh, solo 401k plan, which uh, is a, a totally different topic. and We've done a presentation on that. Uh, you can reach out and uh, uh, watch that presentation, or you can go to our website to learn more about Solo 401k. But Solo 401k has uh, uh, some advantages over an IRA, but again, it's not for everyone. And one of those advantages is that uh, it is exempt from UBIT and leveraged real estate. Now, <clears throat> Uh, most of the conventional lenders or banks, they don't offer this kind of finance. There, there are specialty lenders that uh, specialize in this. We actually, uh, over the, the period of last 13 years, I've been doing this. We put together a list of lenders that specialize in this. We have comprehensive list on our website, uh, sensefinancial.com, non-recourse lenders. Uh, you got the uh, URL there. And you can uh, view the lenders. You can see different programs that they offer because e each lender is different. And uh, uh, there might be uh, one lender that will work uh, better for you than the other, depending on your particular uh, situation. So um, the bottom line is that uh, using a, a checkbook IRA or IRA LLC allows you to have access to unlimited investment options. 
you can do residential real estate, you can do commercial real estate, you can invest in tax liens and uh, uh, tax deeds, you can invest in uh, precious metals, in uh, cryptocurrency, you can uh, invest in private businesses, you can use your uh, IRA money as a bank and actually do a private loan and uh, on and on and on. It allows you to have a true diversification. Uh, cartoon, the credit goes to my daughter and when she was uh, about five or six, I think at that time, but uh, she did a great job by uh, uh, making this illustration where husband holds a basket representing a stock market and bottom fell off and unfortunately all the eggs are broken and, and wife says, well, I thought that our in investments were diversified. Well, guess what? If they are in a single basket, then, then they're not. You may be thinking that you're investing in a mutual funds and you're diversified. And the mutual fund gives you a degree of uh, diversification, but it's still within the same asset class. To achieve a true diversification, you need a truly self-directed retirement account where you have ability to invest in alternative assets. Uh, Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on earth. Uh, there is a lot of wisdom in there, and we, we experienced that just over the last uh, few years with uh, the pandemic and uh, uh, uncertainty in the stock market and uh, recently uh, problems in the banking uh, sector. Uh, but if you are diversified, you, you're significantly reducing your risk. So, um, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a lot of things you can do, but there are certain limitations. So let's talk about that. And those limitations are um, explained uh, to us in the Internal Revenue Code section 4975. And this section specifies three items or three investments that you cannot make with your IRA. It's collectible. So anything that is considered collectible, you cannot invest in, and that can be collectible uh, coins or collectible stamps, collectible artwork, uh, collectible uh, automobiles, uh, collectible wine, uh, anything that is collectible, your, your IRA cannot invest in, that is prohibited. Your IRA cannot invest in life insurance contracts. And finally, it cannot invest in the subchapter S corporation. The reason for this, last one is because you have to be a physical person to be uh, a shareholder of an S corporation. Uh, so therefore, if you are looking to invest in a business, it needs to be structured as a C corporation or, or an LLC possibly. But the LLC uh, may, uh, if you're investing in, a, in an active business through an LLC, uh, you, you better do your homework and talk to a legal counsel and uh, your uh, tax advisor because uh, investing in an active business through an LLC, which represents ownership rather than shareholder versus, you know, S Corp, uh, I'm sorry, C Corp, uh, then you may be exposed to unrelated business income tax by uh, uh, investing in a business that is structured as an LLC. Uh, so just an FYI. Uh, so the this this section uh, defines uh, disqualified person. And this is very important that you understand uh, who the disqualified person. And this disqualified person is basically the uh, owner of the account. So yourself, uh, your spouse, your uh, ancestors and linear descendants and their spouses, uh, any entity in which disqualified person uh, holds control and equity or managing interest. Um, and so basically this is a vertical line. So if you look uh, kind of, you know, imagine uh, a drawing and a vertical line. So you can actually go sideways, uh, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your 
ankle. Uh, those are, uh, you can go sideways. Relatives that are sideways, they're not considered dis disqualified and your IRA can engage in a transaction with uh, extended family member, but not immediate family member. Now let's take a look at some of those uh, uh, transactions. So the prohibited transactions rules are listed again in the Internal Revenue Code section 4975 and they uh, prohibit transactions that are directly or indirectly uh, with uh, disqualified persons such as sell, exchange or lease of any property between a plan and a disqualified person. So let me explain that and give you some examples. Uh, a question often asked, uh, well, I do own a rental property portion. Is there a way I can uh, put that inside of my self-directed IRA? Well, that means your IRA will be uh, buying that property uh, from you and that's prohibited. A transaction involves disqualified person and that is prohibited. Uh, so uh, another example is uh, uh, you, uh, you own a rental property inside of your IRA uh, in, a, in a college town and your, your child goes to uh, college uh, right there. Well, your child cannot stay in that property, whether it's, it's a lease or not, that will be a prohibited transaction. Next, lending of money or extension of credit between a plan and a disqualified person. I did mention earlier that uh, that is not allowed. That's why the loan must be non-recourse because you cannot extend your personal credit to qualify for a loan. It must be non-recourse only. Next, uh, furnishing of goods, services, or facilities between a plan and a disqualified person. Uh, a good example here. Uh, uh, of, of services, if you're a real estate agent and uh, you're considering buying an pr investment property in your IRA, you cannot act as an agent on that transaction. And uh, 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 so you have to use uh, unrelated uh, third party to be an agent, okay? Because you actually, if you act as an agent, uh, it will be double prohibited transaction. Uh, number one, you're going to violate this rule because you're providing services to the to the plan, and then you're going to violate uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, next items. There, you're going to be receiving compensation, so you're going to be uh, committing prohibited transaction twice. Uh, next, transfer to or use by or for the benefit of a disqualified person of the income or assets of the plan. That's why, as I mentioned earlier, all the income that investments of your IRA LLC generate, they must go back to the LLC checking account. You can't use that personally. That will be a prohibited transaction. If you own a property, let's say it's a vacation rental, you personally, your family uh, and, and your immediate family members cannot use that property, whether you pay in uh, a market trend to stay there or not. Uh, just the mere use of that property will be a prohibited transaction. Uh, any act by a disqualified person who is a fiduciary where he deals with the income or assets of the plan uh, in uh, his own interest. And finally, receiving of any consideration by his own personal account by any disqualified person who is a fiduciary from any party dealing with the plan in connection with a transaction involving the income or assets of the plan. And that's what I was referring to being a real estate agent and receiving a compensation for a transaction. Because you're receiving a compensation in a connection with a transaction that involves your IRA, that's a prohibited transaction. And uh, uh, the rules actually uh, for prohibited transaction are very severe. Your entire IRA will be Consider it disqualified, consider it distributed, and uh, uh, in some cases the penalties can be up to 100% of the uh, balance of the IRA. So again, uh, I always tell my clients, if you're not sure about something, the, the rules actually black and white. 
they're, they're pretty straightforward. The, there is not a lot of gray area uh, out there when it comes to an IRA. But uh, there might be some transactions that uh, uh, you're not certain about and, and may appear as a gray area. Well, uh, I always tell my clients, talk to me before doing that. Ask me a question before, not after, because uh, once you do that, it's going to be too late. You can't uh, correct a prohibited transaction in an IRA. Now, in a 401k, again, um, not to switch topics, but if you are eligible for a solo 401k, be sure to watch a presentation on that or go to our website. Uh, the, there is a way to correct a prohibited transaction in a self-directed solo 401k, not in an IRA. Um, we talked about the uh, common prohibited transactions. Uh, um, let's see what I didn't cover here. Uh, engaging in transaction directly or indirectly with disqualified persons. So again, potential uh, uh, sale of a property or even uh, if you are a handy man or, or if you are handy and uh, your investment property needs some work, you can do any of that to be engaging in transaction, providing that uh, services. Uh, buying a property, talked about that. Using an IRA as a security for a loan is not possible. Providing a, a guarantee for a loan to your IRA is not possible, must be non recourse. Uh, you cannot borrow from an IRA, so IRA cannot extend the loan to you. Uh, selling uh, personal assets to an IRA is not possible and, and vice versa. You can actually take a distribution from an IRA. It's called distribution in kind. Uh, I actually had uh, uh, that happen with one of my clients who purchased property in Belize. Uh, they um, held on to it inside of their retirement account for five years. Then they took a distribution of that property out of uh, their retirement account and uh, it became their personal property and they retired there. Uh, receiving any consideration, talked about that, uh, being compensated uh, for services performed, talked about that. And the last one, which is also uh, many people confuse, a uh, commingling of funds between an IRA and a plan uh, participant's personal account. You want to make sure that you do not commingle the funds and all transactions are arm's length. It's, it's possible to partner with an IRA in some rare circumstances. Typically, that's not advisable. Uh, there might be uh, some cases when it might work. In most cases, it will result in a prohibited transaction. So don't do that. Well, um, are you tired of the stock market? <laughs> if, uh, if you're looking at your uh, uh, IRA or 401k statements and uh, if it reminds you uh, uh, that you're uh, riding a roller coaster, then uh, maybe it's time for you to look into alternative investments. Um, now, um, there's been a lot of information that I have to kind of compress in this uh, short period of time. But I would like to offer each one of you on this uh, uh, webinar tonight or whoever is watching this video uh, a complimentary consultation. You can actually go to our website. I think we do have a link on our uh, homepage, but also you can go directly to this URL, sensefinancial.com slash consultation. And uh, that will take you directly to my calendar. Uh, it's uh, in real time. You can see my availability and you can actually book uh, a complimentary 15-minute consultation with me where we can talk about uh, your specific situation and your questions. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining us. Um, contact info is on the uh, display here. Uh, feel free to give us a call. Feel free to uh, email us. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to uh, schedule a consultation, I'll be happy to do that for you. Uh, thank you again for joining us. We do, uh, uh, I believe, uh, have some questions there. I'm going to turn it back to Natalie. Yes, well, thank you for that presentation. Um, our first question is from Doris. 
Can I invest into a CD? Uh, well, you can buy a CD in your uh, uh, checkbook IRA shortly. It's, uh, I don't, uh, I won't call it an investment, uh, but uh, you certainly can buy a CD. Yeah, that's, you, you just have to do that uh, using your uh, LLC as the account owner, using the LLC as the, you know, providing the LLC tax ID number. So not using your name or social security number, uh, but certainly possible. Next question is from Glenn. Um, on an IRS 109, do you use your LLC IN or the custodian IN? Uh, I'm not uh, sure I understand the beginning portion of your question. What is an IRA 109? Uh, or maybe 1099 if, if you meant. Um, but uh, I need to clarify that. It, it actually depends on, uh, uh, on, a, on a 1099. Yeah, uh, it's, it's unclear. So Glenn, why don't you uh, either email me your question or, or give us a call or we can reach out to you. And uh, I, I do need to clarify this question before I answer. But uh, depending on the question, it can be bought. Uh, uh, in most of the times, you will use your uh, uh, LLC's tax ID number, but there are in some instances, you will use the custodial's uh, EIN and, and we do have that uh, for you. Okay, next question is from Rena. Are solo LLC different than custodial accounts? Um, I think you might be referring to solo 401k. Uh, there is no solo LLC, so there, there is a uh, there is a custodial IRA. There is a, an IRA LLC, which is what we talked about majority of the time tonight, which is uh, it's uh, essentially a self-directed IRA on steroids. But it, there is also a solo 401k. Now, solo 401k is designed for those people who are self-employed or own a business. And with the solo 401k, you don't need custodian, you don't need the LLC. It's set up as a trust. Uh, you're the trustee and you are in the control of, uh, of that account. So it is different. Again, I'm, I'm not fully clear on your question, but uh, yeah, those are three different things. Next question is from Emily. How do you handle the required minimum distribution if your IRA is invested in an investment? Emily, very good question. And uh, uh, the, the short answer is you need to plan for that. Now to expand a little bit on that uh, question is that you will need to uh, uh, plan for it. And basically the, the RMD now uh, has been extended at its, uh, its 70, age 74. And uh, I believe it's gonna be going up to 75 in the next few years. And so if you're, let's say in your 60s now, it's time to think about how you're gonna handle the RMD. Uh, obviously, you don't wanna be in the position where you are uh, uh, 73 and you're gonna to have to take RMD next year and you acquire a property or some investment and you, you've got zero cash and there is not enough uh, income uh, coming in from the investment. The, the ideal situation will be for you acquiring enough uh, uh, assets in your retirement account that produce enough uh, cash flow, enough uh, passive income that you will just uh, uh, live on that without touching your uh, principal, without touching the investments, and that will satisfy the RMD. But that's not always the case. Uh, so therefore you do need to plan for that. You need to get with your CPA. You need to punch some numbers and see what your RMD requirements will be when you reach that age, uh, see how much income your investments producing. And, uh, if there is not enough income, then you need to start thinking about maybe distributing some of the uh, assets. Now, one other thing is that if you have a self-directed IRA, with uh, a property that maybe doesn't produce enough income to 
satis satisfied RMD, but you also have another IRA uh, elsewhere at uh, just a regular uh, uh, brokerage, maybe Fidelity or, or Schwab or Vanguard. Well, you can actually, because uh, IRAs can be aggreg aggregated to take the RMD. In fact, you can take the RMD just for one, um, not, not even taking it in from your self-directed IRA, just take money from your uh, uh, brokerage IRA account and satisfy that. But again, you got to plan for this. Another question from Rena. Does the money in the IRA have to be used for property purchases only? Uh, Rina, I think I mentioned that uh, it's uh, it's a misconception that uh, you have to use your self-directed IRA for uh, uh, real estate only. It can be used for any investment. And uh, I think uh, I had a couple of slides on that, giving you just number of investment options there. You can invest in virtually anything. You're not limited to, to real estate. So no, you, you've got the freedom to invest however you wish, as long as you follow the rules. Um, another question from Rena is opening a LLC uh, worth opening if the retirement I'm transferring will only have $50,000. A uh, good question, Rima. Uh, it, it depends. It depends on uh, what you're going to do. 50,000 is a, a decent uh, amount of uh, uh, cash and that you can do something. For example, like I, I have a lot of experience with uh, private lending and you can certainly put uh, your $50,000 to work as a private lender. Uh, you, you have an option, uh, leaving this money in the stock market the bottom line is this, you've got this money, okay? You've got this money and you need to be a good steward of this money that you have in your control. So would you rather leave it in the stock market or do some alternative investments such as private lending? Uh, if you invest uh, in a private loan and get 10% interest, that's $5,000 guaranteed uh, uh, return on your money. Uh, I don't think you can get that with the stock market. Uh, certainly, stock market can produce 10% return some years, but it can lose 10% plus other years. So it's very unstable. And uh, yeah, 50,000 is uh, decent and there are a number of options, but it really depends on, on your preferences, what you want to do. Uh, you know, if, you're, if your goal is to buy uh, half a million dollars investment property, you're not going to be able to do that with 50,000, but, but there are some options. We have a few questions from Bill. Um, can you invest in a private business in the Philippines? And does the LLC have to be set up in the Philippines to invest in real estate in the Philippines? And will the title of the property be under the LLC? Uh, well, uh... Good questions. Uh, uh, number one, you can't, uh, uh, you, you're going to have to set up LLC here in the US to, to create a checkbook IRA. All right. Now, from there, uh, you, your checkbook IRA can, as I mentioned, uh, invest in virtually anything. Uh, you're talking about private business, so we need to I need to dig into this a little bit more to really understand what it is that you're trying to do. Because again, if it's a business, the business may result or income from that business may result in the UBIT. Uh, so you need to understand those consequences. Um, but again, you can use your IRL LLC to invest in, in business anywhere. There is no restrictions. IRS doesn't restrict that. The mechanics, that's something that maybe you need to, um, a lawyer to help you. Uh, I don't have any experience investing in business in Philippines, but maybe to give you an example, I do have uh, actually a number of clients who purchased uh, real estate in Mexico. And uh, to buy real estate in Mexico, you do need, uh, uh, I think, some kind of a Mexican LLC. So just having the US LLC is not enough. So in that case, you, again, you probably need a lawyer there in Mexico to set up an LLC in Mexico, and then your uh, uh, checkbook IRA will own LLC that is in Mexico, which will own a property. Uh, so um, hopefully that gives you some 
uh, direction, but you do need to do some additional homework on your end. Okay, and then we got some clarification from Glenn on her uh, question earlier. Um, so she said it's an IRS form W-9. Do you use the LLC EIN or the custodians? Uh, w9 I I, uh, I believe you're going to be using that we actually have uh, uh, instructions for that I believe on w9 you will use the custodians EIN I'm I think I'm 90 percent sure uh, but uh, uh, Glenn if you're a client go to the client portal uh, and then uh, uh, just uh, search for w9 we actually have instructions on how to complete that and uh, we do provide the uh, custodian CIN there. So good question. Then um, another question for Rina. How much does it cost to open a solo 401k? Uh, solo 401k, we have a simple and straightforward fee structure. It costs uh, uh, $600 to establish the plan and then a flat annual fee of $200 for the maintenance. Okay, well, thank you. Um, that concludes today's webinar. Thank you everyone for joining um, and thank you for the questions um, and thank you to Dimitri for all of the information. If you are watching this on YouTube, please give this a like so that it can reach more people and subscribe to our channel. Um, also share this video with others who you think can benefit from it and feel free to contact our office if we can assist you in any way, but I hope you all have a wonderful evening.